Faraday was particularly interested in the relation between magnetism and electricity. This is William Henry Bragg and his son, William Lawrence Bragg, at the Royal Institution in 1931 and 1965. Thomas Drowery noticed this while watching our video on the history of crystallography. The very effort of getting this one going will stop this one. Then the and if I put this piece of iron in the coil, you'll see the effect is still greater. Look how violent it is now. Thomas is right that there are definitely differences in their accents, but it's actually pretty hard to pinpoint them. So that raises the question, what actually makes them different? There are already some great videos on the psychology of accents out there, so I'm going to focus today on the mechanics of accents. Not why do people have different accents, but how. What physically happens inside your mouth and throat to make the sounds that we recognize as words, and what are the key features that distinguish one accent from another? The human voice is an incredibly versatile instrument. It, it can produce sounds that vary wildly in pitch, as much as four octaves in trained singers, in quality and in timbre. Now, speech is just very well controlled breathing. You breathe in, filling your lungs with air, and as you push it back out by relaxing your diaphragm and carefully flexing your intercostal muscles, you modify its flow to create sounds. Some scientists even theorize that our bipedalism, the fact that we walk on two legs instead of using our arms, freed our ribcage for that fine control, so we quite literally walked the walk before we could talk the talk. On its way out, you can use the moving air to vibrate folds in your larynx, called vocal cords. You can then choose a wide variety of paths for that air to take on its way out, which will modify the sounds. You can close your mouth, forcing the air up through the nasal cavity. You can open your mouth wide. Ah, not so wide. And then you can choose positions for your lips, teeth, and tongue, which will modify the sounds further. And then you can combine those basic sounds into pretty much any combination. So we're all doing slightly different combinations of these things as we speak, and it's pretty amazing the variety that that can create, with all the subtleties of speed and rhythm and emphasis and emotional subtext that we work into our spoken communication. So let's return to our archive footage of two Nobel Prize winning former directors of the Royal Institution, William Henry and William Lawrence Bragg, both presenting in their old age on topics they're passionate about. First, really focus on their R's. Are they really making the R sound in these words? ...is to put a heavier weight on, make the wave go rather faster, and... Of a Mr. Rebo, a bookseller and bookbinder of Blandford Street. In certain words, their R's get lost. This is very common in accents from the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. What we're talking about here is something called roticity, and it's one of the most obvious characteristics of an accent. Watch the tongue movement of different people pronouncing the word nurse in these ultrasound recordings from an amazing project from the University of Glasgow. Nurse. 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 See how, though they're saying the same words, their tongues make very different shapes. And this R sound and tongue movement is absent from the Bragg's words. Rather faster and... North American accents like mine are generally rhotic meaning we pronounce R's in the middle or ends of words like car, butter, or worth. Most English accents from England are now non-rhotic, but language historians believe roticity was the starting point. Shakespeare's English, for example, was believed to be rhotic. And then it became fashionable to drop R's here sometime after the American Revolution. The next way to distinguish accents is the way they handle their vowels. My Canadian accent has what's known as the cot-cot merger. When I read the short O as in a small bed, C-O-T, or A-U as in the past tense of catch, C-A-U-G-H-T, my mouth makes the same sound. The vowel sounds in both those words have merged into one. The same thing happens here with lot and thought. Notice how the mouth makes almost the exact same shape in the Canadian accent. Lot, thought. But there's a clear difference in a British speaker. Lot, thought. Now look at how the Braggs do it. In William Henry compare brought with bottle. Deeply in the books that were brought to his master's shop and began his scientific career as bottle washer. And in William Lawrence, see thought versus a lot. And Faraday thought a lot about these forces of nature. The reverse happens with splits, such as the trap bath split. This is the most distinctive difference between people from the north and south of England, with a short A in both words in the north. Trap, bath. And a longer A in the south. Trap, bath. In both of the Braggs, we see the trap bath split in full force. And there was a note from Mr. Faraday asking him to come to the Royal Institution. The three and great states of matter, as they're called. The wave go rather faster, and you will see now it only get... A lot of the difference in accents can be chalked up to different starting and ending points of vowel diphthongs. That's when you put two vowel sounds together, like IE in height. So keep an ear out for them. 
A major feature of my accent is called the Canadian raising. This is what often gets satirized as a boot, but it's actually a bout. The diphthong in the middle of that word in an American accent would start with a ah and go to oo, out, about. Whereas mine starts quite a bit higher at e, it goes about, ew. Finally, let's look at vowel shifts. Listen to how William Lawrence says matter and gas. The three great states of matter, as they're called, solid, liquid, and gas. William Lawrence straight up replaces the short A sound with a sound pretty close to a short I, very close to the front of his mouth. This is likely a consequence of his Australian upbringing, which starts to explain why these two accents are so hard to place. After hours of watching the Braggs talk, I'm not really sure the father does sound more Victorian. His accent definitely isn't received pronunciation, which is what people also know as the Queen's English. But then again, that accent wasn't taught in schools until after he was an adult. And if you look at his life history, it's all over the place. He was born in the north of England, but then he moved to Leicestershire when he was seven. And he went to grammar school there, but he also went to grammar school on the Isle of Man. And then he went to the University of Cambridge before moving to Australia for 23 years between 1885 and 1908. When we hear his recording in 1931, he's 69 and he's been back in England for 23 years. His son, William Lawrence Bragg, was born in Adelaide in Australia and moved to England when he was 18. When we hear him in 1965, he's 75 years old and has been living in London and Cambridge for the last 57 years. So while on the surface it might seem that they're rather similar people, they're both eminent scientists, they were both directors of the Royal Institution, Nobel Prize winners, father and son, their language lives were totally different. And although they do share certain broad features in their accents, they're both non-rhotic, with a trap-bath split and no caught-caught merger, they're still very distinct. And as they aim to say the same words, their brains will tell their mouths and throats to do subtly different things that result in a wholly different sound. So think about this next time you're talking to someone with a different accent from you. What features define your accent and what features define theirs? And what's going on behind their lips to make these fascinating, fantastic, and foreign sounds? Thanks for watching and thanks to Dr. Eleanor Lawson at the Dynamic Dialects Project at the University of Glasgow and to the Heritage and Public Programs teams here for their help. We'll be here next month with another answer to one of your science questions, so be sure to subscribe for more science videos. It really, it really got into, <laughs> it really got into like uh, William Lawrence Bragg.